Hey guys, Bios and Ramos here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a preview video, but anyways, Dolphins lost today to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Dolphins are now what seven and eight. They lost seventeen to seven. Just not looking good. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. So, that being said, I mean, with even even with yesterday the Ravens winning. Dolphins pretty much were eliminated from the playoffs. Ravens was the crown jewel of all the wild card teams uh, for that final six spot. And with them beating the Chargers last night, that really shook up everything for the rest of the playoffs. Really shut down Miami's chances because even with Dolphins getting nine and seven, you gotta hope and pray for the Ravens to lose on um, week 17, which is next week. And not only that, just, just a bunch of stuff. But let's get into some stats before I jump into anything about my personal opinion. This game went by really fast. Like I felt like the play, like the clock just went. Like that's it, right? I really just don't know where to start. Let's just start with uh, some of the Jacksonville players. Uh, so Jacksonville started with Cody Kessler, and then Blake Bortle came in a couple plays. Then Cody Kessler came back in, and then Blake Bortle came back in, and then blah 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 blah. But anyways, Cody Kessler. He had he went 12 for 17, 106 yards, and he was sacked five times. I think he got dinged up on one of the sacks. That's why Blake came in. Uh, also, shout out to my sister for getting me this early Christmas present. Uh, she gave it to me last night because she wanted me to wear it in the game. So thank you to her. And also, Blake Bortles went five of six, uh, 39 yards, and he was sacked once. And also D.D. Westbrook, he had gotten the ball, like, he had gotten the ball in the backfield, and then he was going to throw it because he was about to get hit. Um, but he just threw it incomplete. Now, their leading rusher for the Jaguars was Carlos Hyde. He had eight carries for, what, 47 yards. And then Leonard Fournette had 18 carries for 43 yards and one touchdown. And uh, pretty much that, Blake Bortles went uh, four carries for 25 yards. Then we have, uh, for the receivers, we have D.D. Westbrook, who went seven receptions for 45 yards. Uh, Dante Moncrief, four receptions, 43 yards. Uh, Leonard Fournette, three receptions, 28 yards. And Rashad Green, two receptions, 22 yards. They weren't doing so well offensively. Uh, if you didn't watch the game, it was mostly 7-7 after the first two drives for both teams. Dolphins scored on their first drive, and the... Jaguars scored on their first drive. Now their leading tacklers were Miles Jack. He had eight total tackles. Telvin Smith six tackles, and Telvin Smith also had a uh, pick six for a touchdown. That's why the score is seventeen to seven. It was ten seven at that point, and then uh, Tannehill was about to get sacked, and then he was just trying to throw it a check down, and Telvin Smith read it the whole way. Uh, like I said in my in the game picks video said uh, uh, Jalen Ramsey was going to be the guy uh, if he was to get an interception. But no, it was Telvin Smith, another FSU guy. So, shout out to you, FSU fanboys. <laughs> then uh, there's Calais Campbell with three, Tashawn Gibson with three, AJ Boyer with three, Jared Wilson with three, Jalen Ramsey three, and the rest are like twos and ones. Uh, I mean, this game felt really, like, not slow, and not fast like it, it went by fast but it went by slow if you understand if you catch my drift just not a lot happening in this game wasn't the most entertaining game to watch it wasn't the most boring to watch either uh dolphins defense for the most part was doing pretty decent throughout the whole game uh given that that pick six happened and really just screwed up miami's chances completely so let's go over some of the dolphins uh ryan tano only quarterback that played he went 15 for 22. He had 146 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. The touchdown was the shovel to Bolden, and the interception obviously was taken back for a touchdown by Tobin Smith. Now, when it came to rushing, we had Kenyon Drake lead them with six carries for 23 yards. Ryan Tannehill, three carries, 22 yards. Uh, Kenyon Blodge, four carries, 10 yards. And Brandon Bolden, nine carries with, I mean, four carries with nine yards. So just, what, 62 yards overall rushing to, who, what, they're 126 for the, the Jaguars. 
It's not much production happening there. Uh, now, when it came to receivers, Danny Amendola was leading receiver. He had three receptions for 40 yards. Uh, and then Ken Balaj had two receptions, 39 yards. Kenyon Drake had four receptions, 31 yards. And Devontae Parker had two receptions and 13 yards. And the only touchdown we had was Brandon Bolden, four-yard touchdown. Now, when it came to tackling, uh, we had Raekwon McMillan lead the pack with 10 tackles. Uh, Rashad Jones was seven, Bobby McCain was six, Devon Godshaw with six, Minka Fitzpatrick with five, Tory McTire with five, Jerome Baker with four, uh, Robert Quinn with three, Akeem Spence with three, and the rest are twos and ones. So Charles Harris got a sack, Cameron Wade got a sack, uh, Jalen Davis got a sack, uh, Andre Branch got a sack, who else? Robert Quinn got a sack. I think there was that. That was it. Um, just not much going on, honestly. Uh, we couldn't for we forced the fumble and then they it landed literally it literally right in another Jaguar player's hands. So just really rough for the Dolphins. Uh, especially being that we were in the hunt, we could have controlled their own destiny and instead just landed on our face usually how the dolphins do it uh it's been the history of the dolphins i saw it's weird too we i don't know if i'll be able to find it and show you guys but it pretty much was saying how the dolphins have been a 500 team for the past 300 or so games like it's really upsetting you know you you're in between being a decent team and a crappy team and i mean I feel like being a eight a five hundred team like overall in the past whatever score games is just, it's not cutting it. Now, what does this loss say for the Dolphins? Um, well, first and foremost, we had a lot of players not play. We had we didn't have Kiko play. We didn't have T.J. McDonald play. Um, we also had so some people who filled in for the Michael linebacker, right? Uh, we also had uh, Jalen Davis, who was a cornerback, who came in quite often. Um, who else? Minka Fitzpatrick played at safety, but Minka Fitzpatrick has been on the field all year long. And just, I wasn't really happy with seeing, like, like, I understand maybe the Dolphins were pretty much taken out of the playoffs by the Ravens want, winning, but still fight, still try to compete, try to, still try to be in there, you know, show that you guys were actually trying to do it. And, I don't know. Maybe the magic of the throwback jerseys are off. I don't know. But it was really upsetting to see Kiko on the sideline. Uh, upsetting to see Xavier and Howard not be able to play. Uh, they probably shut him down. I just don't really know what's happening here. There's some things that could affect the whole roster. That could be either getting rid of head coaches, uh, getting rid of players. Just a lot of stuff. Uh, do I think they're going to fire Adam Gase? Rough. Rough call. Uh, ask me after a Buffalo game. After a Buffalo game, I have a pretty sure answer. Uh, that being said, I don't think the Dolphins are going to try to beat the Buffalo Bills. Uh, but I do believe they're going to try to like put more players like Kaseki in all the time. Uh, just like all the young guys and pretty much just let them play and not only that see what they got see what they bring to the table that's pretty much why we had Jalen davis in why we had mike hole in like it's not that I'm, i didn't like him in i just would like kiko would like xavier howard would like tj mcdonald like stuff like that but that's it dolphins are eliminated from the playoffs pretty much uh definitely not gonna make it eight and eight with the ravens now being nine wins so I mean, math doesn't add up. Uh, just real rough for the Dolphins. It's always next season. That's, <laughs> that's been my mantra for the past two years, huh? Uh, it's just real upsetting. You know, you wish your team could perform and compete every week and get wins and just, you know, make you have something to be proud of. Uh, and Dolphins didn't do that this season. Hopefully you can do it next season. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, just real rough. Hopefully the Dolphins can, one, turn it around next week and smack the Bills and show everyone just like, okay, why not? That's sucky. And second of all, just keep your eyes high. 
uh, just keep on enjoying football. Uh, if you are a Dolphins fan and only a Dolphins fan, you know, just watch football. Just enjoy seeing other teams do well, <laughs> like the Dolphins. Uh, but fins up. Never going to give up on this team. Hopefully I can get this win on Buffalo and just end the season off on a right note. Though I wish they would have ended this season at home, you know, 7-1 and one instead of 6-2 and two at home. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. But that's all I have for you guys today. And I will see you soon. Later. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team.